Um, it's not 128 jobs, it's 128 posts. Of those, half of them are filled and half of them are empty. So you're looking at 64 people in post. Um, that's against um, a total workforce, excluding the schools, of about 5,000. So that's less than 1% of the workforce. When we're faced with a 12, 13 million pound budget gap, which is about 8% of our general fund revenue spend, 64 posts is actually a very, very small number. Now, we don't want to make anyone redundant, and our policy is to avoid redundancies at all costs. Um, and our plan is to try and um, redeploy those people, those 64 people, into other areas of the council. There are some areas where we're expanding, where we're putting in more money, um, and of course people leave um, you know, regularly throughout the year. So by managing vacancies and redeployment, we would hope to avoid redundancies at all costs. That's our policy. Now, um, you say we should be going further. Well, we could go further. The council isn't a, you know, a job centre. We're providing services that people rely on. Now, if you delete jobs, if you, you make more job cuts, then you are, by the same token, going to reduce services. So you, know, you can't just get rid of staff without um, reducing the services that those staff provide. So again, we're trying... Um, the, the, the ones that we put out for general public uh, consultation were the ones that we thought that um, the public would have a strongest view on. So they were th things that um, the public would come into contact with. Um, we, at the same time, we have been discussing with all the other organisations that we, we work with as a council, the voluntary groups and so on. So those extra items that you mentioned, we've been in discussion. If there's a particular item that affects them, we've been in discussion directly with those um, those providers. So what you've seen perhaps published in City View and what we've put in our Cabinet report in October um, isn't the full extent of the consultation. But um, we were trying to have a focused debate um, because, as you say, hundreds of lines of, of, um, of budgets is not the most user-friendly thing to engage with, with people on. The whole point of doing a consultation is to get all the ideas out into the open and have a proper debate. And as you said, it's hundreds of lines of a budget um, £180 million pound revenue budget, we, our total spends about half a billion, huge money, and though we're all the politicians working incredibly hard to make the right decisions, we don't have all the answers, we don't always get it right first time, so the more we can engage with people and those experts, whether they're the people that use the service, whether they're our partners in the voluntary sector, or even our staff, um, we want to hear what they have to say. So we've, we've tried to allow sufficient time for that debate, up until that final date, we are still having discussions, and only yesterday I was meeting with various groups to talk about aspects of the budget. Of course, there's a chance to change our mind, but what we won't get away from is the fact there is a big gap, and that gap arises every year because of the government settlement. And we do have to make some tough choices, but we're, we're certainly prepared to change our mind where the argument is put to us sensibly. I would point to the fact that we've had a legacy of Labour and Liberal Democrat control for many, many years. We are a new administration. We are turning things around. I would hope in a year, two years' time, that figure will be a lot higher. But hopefully by this year, in this year, uh, by keeping council tax um, the increase to a historically low level, um, by delivering the extra investment into core services that the public are telling us that they want uh, to see increased, and by, um, by finding record efficiency levels, they will start to see that we're doing a better job than our predecessors.